Hello, bonjour, comment ça va Today we're talking about the differences between Oculus Link and Virtual Desktop. Now, the content inside of this video has been re-edited and remastered because it was shot quite a while ago, but I do need you to know that since then, there's been some, of course, some new updates with 1.13.6 on Virtual Desktop, and also I have purchased and received and been testing a CAT8 Ethernet cable, which is the monster of all cables for the internet. So if it doesn't work with that, probably I don't know what would. And I have to admit that unless I'm right next to the router, like one meter away, there isn't much difference. Like when I'm in my green room here, 15 meters away from the router with the door closed and the wall in between, it's still not performing the way it's supposed to. So, you know, that's that. Now, I also want to announce that there is a competition going, guys. You could grab a copy of Carly and the Reaper Man, which is a fantastic app. So do watch until the end of the video for the details or just go to the description below. It will tell you how you can enter because it's free to enter and free to win. So go and check it out. For those who are familiar with virtual desktop, but maybe you haven't used it in a little while, you'll see that when you open it, it's going to prompt you to install a new update. Now, just go through the motions, just click install. You don't need to use SideQuest in order to install the new patch. However, if you launch it after you've done the install and you don't see your games tab or the launch Steam VR tab, then this is what you're going to need to do. Go to your settings tab, see all, then storage, go and find virtual desktop and delete it from the Oculus Quest. Then hook up your Oculus Quest to the PC. You can use your charging cable. It's absolutely fine. Make sure that you're in developer mode. If you're not in developer mode, you're not familiar with SideQuest, please go to the link description below to find out how to install it and what it's all about. Then download the file, which is an APK file for version 1.13.1 of Virtual Desktop. There's a link in the description below as well. Okay, you're nearly done. Once you've downloaded the APK, go into SideQuest and go into already installed apps, which is the little icon of all the different galleries at the top right hand side. Find Virtual Desktop, make sure that you delete it from there and also clear cache. Once you've done that, go to the other icon, which is a little rectangle with a little arrow pointing down and click Install APK. Go and find the file wherever you saved it after you downloaded it and install it that way. You will see a little notification icon. You can also go into the Running Tasks tab to see whatever has been done. But once it's installed, normally SideQuest will tell you with a green bar at the bottom that it's been installed successfully. Once the installation is complete on SideQuest, simply remove your cable and restart your Oculus Quest. Now, normally, whether you are using version 15 or version 16 of Oculus Quest, you will see Virtual Desktop in your library. Simply click it to open it up. It might prompt you to do an update again. Just go through the motions once more. And if you see any pop-ups that ask you to allow a microphone or allow anything, Click allow as well. And boom, that's it, you're done. All you have to do is open up Virtual Desktop and you'll see the games and also launch Steam VR tab there on the right hand side. Make sure that you do launch as much as you possibly can any of your Oculus games or Steam games from the games tab. I highly suggest that you join the Virtual Desktop Discord. The guys there are very friendly and also not every VR experience is compatible. Link in description below to the list of those VR experiences. By the way, if you're not able to connect to your PC after you launch Virtual Desktop, I highly suggest that you close Virtual Desktop on the Oculus Quest and then open the app streamer on your PC. It will auto update to 1.13.1. Then everything should be fine. I just want to mention that Google Earth is downloadable through multiple platforms, the main ones being the Oculus Store and also through Steam. Now, if you're going to be running it with Virtual Desktop, please run the Steam version as it will not work if you use the Oculus version. For Oculus, of course, you can use it via Oculus. It will open up Steam VR automatically for you. All right, time to play our fun game where you get to guess which is Oculus Link and which one is Virtual Desktop. I put in the bottom right hand side and left hand side corners of your screen, you'll see the letter A and the letter B. And by the way, I did add some special effects sounds to the video, but no colors have been changed. Everything is as per what you would see inside of the VR headset. All right, let's begin. Do the approach. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, approach briefing. We're going on left base for runway. Uh, what was 
this 3-2? Three, 3-1. Three, three, one. One, three, three, one, that way, so. And they have a GPS system. Set. Radios. We have pre-selected. So before I reveal which one is Oculus Link and which one is Virtual Desktop, I just want to give a quick shout out to all those who went to watch and comment on last week's video which is all about comparing VD with Link using down a rabbit hole. You guys are awesome! Remember to leave a comment below so I can give you a shout out in the next video and of course you'll be helping the channel so all good! So how did you find this week compared to the previous episodes where we had compared Half-Life Alex, Lost Circus VR and also down the rabbit hole in last week's episode? Well, if you would have said that A was actually Oculus Link, you would have got it wrong because B was actually Oculus Link and A was Virtual Desktop. If you got it right this week, you get a trillion points. Oof, just like that. I almost forgot to mention that for the purpose of this test, I put all the settings to medium, but I did enable boost clock rates and also slice encoding. The app was running at 8 megabits per second. I was utilizing about 45% of my GPU, 15 to 20% of my CPU. The video frame rate was set to around 30 frames per second. And overall, the app was running at 72 frames per second. To be fair, Google Earth is one of the most graphic intensive VR experiences, more so than perhaps Half-Life Alex, because it has to re-render all these maps in 3D via various different servers. So, you know, that could cause some issues. Now, I was standing about a meter away from my router. I also have a dongle attached from the computer on an extension placed right next to the router as well. Using five gigahertz, I was not running a ethernet cable, which virtual desktop do recommend you use. All right, I hope that you found today's video useful and that you enjoyed it. Remember to like and subscribe, share some love so that you and I together we can grow the community and help as many people as possible in VR because ultimately that is what it's all about. All right, until next time, high five, take it easy, and as always, DJ, take it away.